Hello and welcome to how to continue your enrichment. So you started your enrichment yesterday. You added a gram of your soil sample and uh, five mils of your bacteria and uh, 45 mils of culture media, whatever uh, bacteria and culture media you needed to use to a 250 mil flask like this. And so here's one that I started yesterday uh, with some soil that was donated by a student from India. So I can't wait to see what, uh, what we get from this. Uh, so it's very smelly. You're gonna wanna wear gloves when you do this and you're gonna wanna be careful you don't spill anything. You're gonna need a 50 mil uh, conical tube. This one's the balance, so we don't wanna use that one. This one is the one we're gonna use, Caruso. And so here's what you're gonna wanna do. Take off the lid, take your flask. You're gonna wanna give it a swirl, okay? Get all the solids floating, okay? The better you do at this, the easier it's gonna to be to clean it. You're gonna take all of this, give it a good swirl, and dump it in here. It'll all fit, okay? We chose the volumes uh, that we did on purpose so that they would all fit in there. The more you get of this in here, the easier this is to clean because all of this crud, it can't go down the sink, right? So we're gonna have to clean this out in a way that keeps it from going down the sink. So make sure you swirl it around and let it go in here. All right, next step is to put this in a centrifuge. Now to do that, we gotta balance this. So what we gotta do next is weigh this. And so let's take this over here. Here's a scale. Easiest way to do this is put it on a scale. And if you, if you zero out or tear the, uh, the one that's filled so that it's zero, and then you put the empty one, the balance, or even if it has water in it already, it'll tell you just how far off it is. So right now, it's at minus 45.82 grams. Make sure the arrow is pointing at grams. So you know you need to add 45.82 mils of water, so 46 mils. And this will tell you where 46 mils is, right? Right about there. So fill it up to right about there with water, okay? Let's uh, pause this while I do that. All right. So I'm back. Now we've filled up the balance with water up to about 46 mils. All right, so these are both ready to go. So we're gonna take it to one of our centrifuges. We have tabletop centrifuges. We have two different sizes. We have some that hold 50 mil tubes and some that hold 15 mil tubes. And the difference is in the size of the sleeve, right? Either they hold the big tubes or the narrow tubes. Always when you use these, Make sure that you put your tubes in one of the sleeves, never the empty holes that hold the sleeves. Because if you do, uh, your tubes will shatter and you'll be uh, cleaning this up. And you don't want to do that, trust me. Okay, so uh, always balance a centrifuge. Okay, you got to put them in uh, opposite each other. All right, now these very, very old centrifuges uh, don't lock when you close them. So you have to be very, very careful. Okay, so close it going to be noisy. Now this says to spin it, uh, it the lab manual actually gives you a, a speed, but you know these old ones, they don't have any actual uh, RPM <laughs> uh, listings on the dial, so we're just going to go max speed, okay? Max speed, that's as fast as it goes, it's as fast as uh, possible on here, which is going to work for us. So we're going to set it up to max speed, we're going to let it go for, what is it, 10 minutes, uh, and um, I'm gonna pause it when we do that because it's very loud, okay? And we'll be back at the end of the spin. So here's how we're going to clean up our flasks because you know, it's got some solids still in here and they can't go down the sink. The sinks don't have garbage disposals. So we gotta figure out how to get rid of the solids. And so what we're gonna do is while the uh, centrifuge is spinning for uh, uh, to pull down all of that soil and all of the bacteria and all of the crud, what we're gonna do is you take the tape off you're gonna put just a small splash of water in here. You're not gonna fill it up because whatever water goes in here is going into the autoclave bag. So we don't wanna fill it up. 
So we're going to put in just a small little bit of water. Remember, uh, the water comes out fast in here, so don't have it under there when you turn it on. Just put in a little bit of water, not much, just a little bit. And you're going to use that to get all the solids floating around, okay? And you're going to take that to the autoclave bag and dump it in. And if you succeed in getting all of the solids out, or almost all of the solids out, then you're in good shape. Then you can go ahead and clean it with soap and water, a couple shots. Add some soap, add some water, shake it like a mixed drink that you've seen in, in the movies. Rinse it a bunch of times. Tap to get all the soap water out. If it still smells, it isn't clean. It shouldn't smell. And then it goes over here next to the big sink. There may be a bin right here. There isn't right now. Or it may go over here next to the sink to be cleaned. Your gloves now are contaminated. You should change them, okay? They've got your, your crud all over them. The next thing that you're going to do while you are... Oops, wrong place. <laughs> Don't do that. The next thing that you're going to do, autoclave bag, while you are waiting is make a plate. So let's uh, pause while we do that. Okay, so I've moved us over to the... Um, uh, back to a bench. And we have uh, some of our cells, and we have a fresh plate. The uh, uh, enrichment is still spinning because it's got to spin for 10 minutes. And while that's spinning, we have cleaned our flask because you want to start thinking about time management. We've cleaned our flask, and now we'll make a plate so that it's set and ready to go. Uh, when we need it. And so we'll take the plate, we'll go ahead and label it with uh, the name, date, and what the sample is. Okay, we're going to need that right side up. And we've got our cells. Okay, so to make the plate, this is very easy. We're just making top auger lawn, a uh, top auger lawn of cells. So we've got our uh, uh, cells there and we need some top auger so top auger into the cells onto the plate make sure that it's covered nicely no air pockets and let it set and now by the time our enrichment is done the plate will be ready it'll be nice and solid and we won't have to wait for it all right, and so now we'll pause until the centrifuge is done. So, we just took the enrichment out of the centrifuge, and you can see the soil and bacteria have all been uh, pushed to the bottom of the centrifuge, and we have a supernatant with uh, bacteria and phage and stuff like that floating in the supernatant, okay? so. We want to get the phage out of here, but you know, we don't need all of it. And the lab manual tells you to take this and dump it into a new 50 mil conical tube. You, you don't really have to do that. You have to do that if this pellet is super loose and you have to centrifuge it a second time. Sometimes that happens and you see this floating around. If that happens, take this, dump it into a new tube and spin it again. But if it's nice and tight like this, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this and be gentle with it. You don't want to disturb the pellet. You're going to take this and you're going to filter it. You only need one mil of it, so you're going to need some tubes, right? Because you're going to take that one mil and you're going to dilute it, right? So what I've done is I've taken some microcentrifuge tubes. I've taken one of them. This is going to be what we filter. So it's going to be the undiluted or 10 to the zero, and I've labeled it with uh, Caruso enrichment, right? And then I have these other tubes, 10 to the negative one, negative two, negative three, 
negative 4. So those are just the exponents, 10 to the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Okay? So the 0 is going to get the sample. Okay? So the filtering. You've seen that before, but when it's nice and clean like this, you can do it the easy way, which is take your syringe, take a filter, I just opened this, and attach it with the barrel still on. Remember, never pull this, excuse me, don't attach it yet. <laughs> I just said that backwards, don't attach it yet, because remember, once you attach it, you can never pull the, the syringe barrel back. So just have this ready to go. Take your sample, and if it's nice and clean, you can just pull out a mill, okay? And so now we have a mill of our sample. You can now screw that on to this filter. And then you can push it through to the microcentrifuge tube. Now you won't get a full mill out because some of it stays stuck to the filter, but that's okay, you don't need a full mill, right? You just need enough to do a spot test and to dilute with. So we got maybe, I don't know, a little more than half a mill here, but that's plenty. Okay, so let's uh, put this down. This is trash. So that goes into the autoclave. And really, you don't need this anymore. It's tempting to stick it in the fridge until you know the results, and that's fine. You can do that if you want to. Now, you need some SM or PB, whatever your buffer is, and we're going to use that to do our dilutions. So how do we do our dilutions? Well, we have our dilution tubes set up and labeled. We need to put something in them. So what we're going to put in them is our dilution buffer. In this case, 90 microliters of SM. You might be using PB, you might be using something else entirely. Use whatever the uh, procedure tells you. So I'm taking 90 microliters, 9-0 on a P100, and I'm going to add it to all of these tubes. It's a sterile, same sterile tip going in each time, so it's okay. Into the same thing, so down to the first stop, into the media, up gently, going into a sterile tube. Remember, if you touch anything different, anything non-sterile, you have to change tips. Oops, forgot my order here. Down to the first stop, not the second. Up, we have 90 microliters. All right, so now we have four tubes with 90 microliters in it, tip. Now we have a P10 or a P20, except for 10 microliters. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 10 microliters from here, transfer it to there, and then vortex. 10 from here, transfer it to there, and then vortex. 10 from here, transfer it to there, and then vortex. 10 from here, transfer it to there, and then vortex. into the liquid. Make sure this time you press all the way down and keep your thumb down so that this tip comes up empty. And a two second vortex is fine. You don't need to do a long one. New tip. Okay, so this has been vortex. Now we're going to take 10 microliters out of here, press to the very first stop, submerge the tip gently. So we have 10 microliters, you can see it right there. Submerge the tip, press down, you can press a little extra down to that second stop, it's all gone. 
this gets vortexed. New tip. Press to the first stop, pull it up. 10 microliters. Second stop, this gets vortexed. And the last one, 10 microliters. Into the fourth one. And then this gets vortexed. 10,000 times less concentrated than this. All right, now what do we do with these samples? Well, these are all dilutions of this, right? This has been filtered into here. This is one tenth as concentrated, one tenth as concentrated as this, and so on. And so now what we want to do is put them on this lawn of bacteria that we just created. And so this has had enough time to set. And so what we need to do now is create ourselves a little grid. We need one, two, three, four, five, six with the negative control. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, let's label them zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and the negative control. It's tempting to put the labels right there in the middle, but if you do that, you won't be able to see your results. So put them off to the side, okay? Now remember, when you flip this over, they're going in that direction, not in this direction, okay? This becomes this. Now what you're going to put on here is five microliters of each sample. So this should read zero, five, zero. So let's we'll start with the zero. It's not of the unpurified one. It's not of the unfiltered one. It's this one, the filtered one. So we're going to take five microliters, and we're going to put it right here where the zero is, right in the middle of that square. You have to touch it gently for the drop to fall off. That's it. That's all we got to do. So we're going to do that six times. That was the zero. Now the negative one. Right in the middle of the negative one square. negative two in the middle of the negative two square. The negative three in the middle of the negative three square. Remember we're going backwards from right to left. And the negative four and the negative four square. Notice that I move the position of the tubes as I'm doing this. That's as a little reminder of which ones I've completed because trust me, I have made a mistake many times. <laughs> so that's just a way that I keep from making that mistake again. And then our negative control is our SM to see if we contaminated that with phage. Because if we do, we gotta throw it away. And so we're just gonna put a droplet of SM in the negative control one. All right, now the lab manual tells you to let this sit for 20 or 30 minutes for those droplets to soak in. It never happens. They never soak in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna carry this very, very carefully face up. You can't flip it upside down and you can't tilt it or else those droplets will run. You're gonna carry it very carefully face up and place it in the incubator face up. And then if you come by Many hours later, you can flip it over, but if not, just look at it tomorrow. All right, good luck. I hope you